Depo on the beat. I'm gonna eat ass, let's go. I forgot for this, by the way. I forgot we're lacking views right now. Give me a second, let me just, um... What, what, why would that be less of me? Why would people see me like that? Um, have you considered the things that you say? No. Only I can lick it. Only I can lick it. Uh, mm? Explain that to your parents! Lewd tubers, probably the most infamous niche in the entire VTuber community. Some people hate them, some people love them, and some people find themselves ambivalent to their rise in popularity over the past year or so. No matter where you stand on this matter, Lewd tubers are here to stay. So why don't we discuss? Where does all this dissatisfaction with them stem from, and are there deeper layers to it than what meets the eye? I'm here to paint as full of a picture as possible into the behind the scenes of a LewTuber's daily existence. And perhaps if you're on the fence of becoming a LewTuber, this may serve as a cautionary tale before you dive in head first. Helping me with this project is the lovely Mama Heavy, your local Plague Doctor Mama who has been so kind as to share their knowledge and experiences as a LewTuber with me. First, and probably the most controversial point to discuss, Let's break down what a say-so VTuber versus a LewTuber is. Right now, you're thinking, No thanks, I'll skip this introduction. I already know what a say-so VTuber is. Wrong. You don't. Sit down and keep watching. The say-so to LewTuber pipeline is non-linear and ever-changing, so I offer a new way to view it. Seiso is a Japanese word that means neat and clean. This has been adapted to reference someone's personality in the VTubing sphere. In English, we would consider this to mean pure and wholesome. Some of the most notable Seiso VTubers, as labeled by the community, are Sister Claire from Nijisanji JP, Ina from Hololive EN, and Rosemi from Nijisanji EN. If you know these creators, you have a general sense of their behavior and image. On the opposite side, there is the fake word unsayso that tends to define everyone else. Anyone from Luka Kaneshiro to Project Melody could be considered unsayso, depending on the person handing out the labels. I like to think of this pipeline as a slider, with people sliding up and down between every stream. As a wise chatter once said, the scale can be, I can watch this with my grandma, to, I need headphones and lock my doors. Sometimes, creators can be extremely family-friendly, and on other days, they can be the VTuber equivalent of La Critera. That's called range, and it's a good example of an adult being open about being an adult. This would be what most people consider as unsayso, with unsayso almost acting as a middle ground term between sayso and LuTuber. But this is a phenomenon I would like to call being an adult. LuTuber, on the other hand, is a term that was only recently coined during the pandemic. It was made to encapsulate VTubers who engage in hard, not safe for work content, be it posting not safe for work fan art or focusing their content around not safe for work themes like ASMR ear licking. However, as more and more indies began delving into not safe for work content and generally having adult joke humor, the term became widespread, almost to the point of overuse. Nowadays, when asked what defines a LewTuber, results may widely vary, and people can't seem to agree where the line is between sussy and lewd. So going back to the slider, I want you to see it as a non-numerical scale. For instance, my YouTube content is very safe for work, but when I stream, I sometimes crack dirty jokes. Does that make me a LewTuber? Unsay so? I wouldn't perceive myself under those labels because I'm not constantly pushing not safe for work or sussy concepts into my content. So I would be around here on the slider. Got it? Make sense? We will be rolling with that definition from this point onwards. So how do we begin to unravel all that makes up the LuTuber controversy? Well, why don't we begin with the beginning, the very first VTuber to take on the moniker of LuTuber. In the early days of COVID lockdown, the game VRChat was a widely successful interactive site where you could import your own models, with seemingly no restrictions on the level of nudity. 
due to this, some of the very first virtual th workers came from VR chat, but most of them at the time did not consider themselves to be part of the VTuber genre. While not the first VTuber to delve into the realm of not safe for work on stream, Project Melody was the first Western VTuber to break into the market of high octane virtual th work as we know it. She started on Chatterbait in February of 2020, an 18-plus site that focuses on independent cam models streaming and chatting to a live audience. Melody was the first to really put together the pre-existing 3D full-body tracking technology and live cam modeling niches, pulling in a curious yet loyal audience who were looking for the fetish of having sexy times with an anime waifu. Project Melody is like the OG YouTuber and the first person to have a fully naked, fully rendered, fully sexually interactive model. That's so cool. Is there is there like a trend now? Do people try to like replicate that and go on to like Fansly and Chatterbait to do the same thing? Yep, because she was the first, believe it or not, IRL stars got mad at her because she was she is the number one and she was the number one for a long time, which made a lot of people upset because they're like, I'm a real flesh and blood person actually out here having for money. Why am I not popular like this? And it's, she's like, well, I'm a flesh and blood person, too. And I'm also having IRL. The difference is I hide all the imperfections and get rid of all the stigmas by making myself into anime. I bridge the gap between hentai and IRL. And because of her, models like that now exist everywhere. Honestly, amazing entrepreneurship. Love that for her. With her catering to this new audience, it was no surprise that in the very first month of streaming on Twitch with her safer work model, Melody would shoot up directly into stardom. I had previously never seen her content before researching this video, but I was genuinely surprised to see that her content both on Chatterbait and on Twitch are relatively the same. Only on Twitch, there is the lack of a donation controlled. <coughs> Otherwise, the way she carries herself and the topics she talks about on stream are largely the same and often mundane. Her reactions are actually kind of cute. Like, I can see why people would uh, try and get her to react. It was really cute, regardless of like, it's actually but she's like whimpering out people's usernames whenever they uh, give her give her like the little zip the zing honestly a very smart move whether you are interested in not safe for work content or not you should be able to recognize that melody did what no other vtuber was doing at the time literally kickstarting a revolution to how the community looked at content possibilities more and more vtubers began to delve into OnlyFans and full body tracking live streams and many discovered that Fancy was a great alternative to Twitch for streaming not safe for work games and building an audience. Even on the safe for work side, people realized that there was an audience for 3D full body tracking streams during a time when Live 2D became the most desirable format for VTubing. In a simple word, Project Melody was revolutionary. More VTubers began debuting and forming their content around towing the edge of virtual work. Some of the most notable names are Shy Lily, Buff Pup, Numi, and other creators who once belonged to V Shoujo. A saying as old as time itself prevails once again within this new niche of the VTuber sphere. Cells. Now, clearly, the names I've just mentioned don't actively have entirely not safe for work content, but there is a level of riskiness that their models and content have that exceeds normal amounts of adult jokes. Enter the Lootuber. I took like a two-week break after hitting affiliate and came back as a VTuber, heavy metal gaming freak, the Plague Doctor VTuber. And again, like that was only about two, three months of that before I was like, I'm not seeing the growth I want to see. I'm not getting the engagement I want. And I'm just not happy doing this. However, I don't want to give up. I want to double down. So let me go ahead, crack open the credit card, hire a VTuber artist and see where this can go. Being this lewd mommy who gets to do what she wants, when she wants and who she wants whenever. I went at that point from 170 followers to a point where I was averaging 50 to 60 new followers every month. And you might be thinking that Lootubing was a niche only fillable by indie VTubers who have nothing to lose, with of course Vishojo being a major exception to this. But that all changed with the debut of a certain overhaul to the Ian corporate industry. Before late 2021, Hololive and Nijisanji weren't on equal footing especially in the English department. 
Hollow Myth became an overnight success, a breakthrough into the Western market following the bridge between worlds known as Kiryu Koko. Although this wasn't the first step taken into globalizing corporate VTubers, previous waves like Nijisan GIN had been underperforming in getting the company's name out. When Hololive Myth debuted, they maintained the status quo of being idol-like figures that remained professional and rather say-so, thus acting as precedent for future English waves. Nijisanji trailed not far behind with their release of Lazulite, Obsidia, and Etheria, but none were showing the extreme numbers that the likes of Gaogura and Mori Calliope had reached within the first couple of months. In a sense, Nijisanji was still dragging their feet behind Hololive, but then they took a chance. A male wave audition went out, causing chaos in the community. This was a chance not many male VTubers expected to see so soon, and many wondered how lucrative the wave would become after noticing Hololive JP's male branch Hollow Stars pulling in marginally lower numbers than their girls despite the huge notoriety provided by the label. For some reason, male VTubers just weren't that popular in the West. But not for long. Right off the bat, Luxium broke records and shattered the PG-13 friendly atmosphere of the English Niji Holo space. Previously taboo topics instantly became the norm when watching a Mr. Rias or Vox Akuma stream. Not even their first collab stream could be spared from the level of sussy content they produced. When you bite into them is kind of satisfying, but sometimes like you just kind of want to feel it going down, you know? Yeah, yeah, you want to swallow when you're going, going down. down, yeah. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Clippers had a field day, pushing out the best moments of Luxium being gay and snarky, being unsay so in the most blatant of ways, and VTuber fans who hadn't fallen into the Niji rabbit hole before then suddenly became enraptured with this new form of corporate VTuber. It became extremely clear that as opposed to Hololive's idol-like culture, which is relatively unique to East Asian countries, Niji Sanji took on a more westernized streamer paradigm where there were less restrictions in what type of content they put out, mirroring their American-based competition. And thus, you were sat at the back, praying that this would be your chance to get in my pants. <laughs> God, I hate you. Luxium became the new trend, the new shiny VTuber meta, and all corporate VTubers who debuted afterwards were, whether they were conscious of it or not, influenced by this change. That's not to say Lootubing was invented by Luxium, but that something clicked into place within the English corporate market. More and more streamers like Mika Melodica, Uki Violetta, Hex Haywire, and a plethora of other agencies debuted talents who were more open to engaging in sexually charged content. A lot of agencies are realizing a lot of what sells a VTuber is the voice, the control they have, the voice singing, ASMR, etc. So if the voice is good enough, I'm just going to say it, like, perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. Niji, Sanji, and Hololive, at the end of the day, they're companies. They're they businesses. Yeah. They don't care about ethics and morals. They care about it because the general public cares about it. Whatever pays the bills is what they care about. So yeah. if talent is good enough and they think they can make enough money off of it to warrant the risk, they'll do it. However, it's worth noting, you're going to be looked at a bit differently and a bit more harshly based on what your lewd content is. Like, NSFW ASMR is usually very tasteful hmm. and it usually demonstrates a wide variety of video editing skills and vocal range. Naturally, as corporate VTubers made this change while the YouTuber craze on the indie side was well underway, it was inevitable for risky content to be pushed out above all else. And now we face a problem. Twitter has become a cesspool for not safe for work bait posts. No matter how you try to navigate the mute and block functions, large breasts will end up on your screen when you're out in public. It seems like everyone is delving into ASMR now due to the hyper parasocial and lewd charges that bring in an easy crowd. And due to that, the notion of, well, if I want success and growth, I have to put out lewd content emerges. And in tandem, dissatisfaction at the rise of lewdtubers. So enough backstory, where are we now? In a lot of cases, especially on Twitter, the noise surrounding Lootubers comes from say-so creators and VTubers-to-be, better known as VTweeters. And while I can understand that it comes as frustrating to see other people who debuted after you reach heights your career hasn't seen, I don't think it becomes a say-so versus unsay-so battle. 
Viewers are not finite, and many audience members subscribe to both sides of the spectrum. Some sentiments I've seen in the community range from no one supports SESO VTubers anymore to people only become LUTubers to gain quick fame and money, implying that virtual sex workers and un -so VTubers don't have the same passion for content creation that SESO VTubers do. It's reasonable to be frustrated, and you're more than welcome to voice that frustration on your platform, but it becomes a problem when you do it in such a way that purposely ignores the other party's hard work and ambitions. Now, there is a half-truth in the belief that LooTubers have a quick and easy straight shot to fame. For a lot of the most notable names, all it took was one huge spark of content to deliver their brand out to the majority of VTuber audiences. I can pretty much pinpoint the exact moment the internet began talking about Shoto and Cinder, and you should recognize these moments too. Are you angry? Little baby? Little baby bottom boy? Little baby puppy man? The cutest twink on all of Twitch? Angry baby boy? Bottom? 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 Little baby man? Angry bottom twink bottom baby puppy dog boy? Cope harder bottom war. In my bed, I can't have that. Want that long neck? Not talking giraffe neck. Ain't no laying down, man. We about to have late fun. I'm about to make your balls stick up like space fun. One may chalk it up to them indulging in not safe for work content to garner traction before and after these historic moments. And right, that's a part of it, but it's not the entirety. Simply being lewd does not guarantee a massive explosion. Otherwise, we would be seeing many more indies at the top of the community. Shoto's clip was in direct correlation to his rapport with his chat. It was a mix of two inside jokes made together with his audience, which eventually accumulated into a chatter prompting that text-to-speech donation. Beyond the absurdity and comedic genius of the donation itself, it becomes very apparent that Shoto has fostered a community based on his own personality, consistency, and entertainment factor, regardless of his lean towards lewd jokes. If you're a content creator yourself, you've probably also recognized a few manufactured qualities within that clip that emphasize its humor. Keyframe subtitles, vine boom sound effect, model assets, quick zoom-ins on his visible reaction, and most importantly, the foresight to edit and post the clip in the first place. In other words, he set himself up for success. It wasn't solely based on luck and lewd content. The same goes for Cinder. And while the entire cover from song choice to vocals are explicitly sexual, it was a lucrative decision based on her experience as a creator and an incredible amount of balls. Would you record and release a song cover like that? Personally, I would rather die. She knew the exact reaction that it would spark. Which leads me to my next point. Lootubing does not make the content creation growing pains any easier. Like all forms of streaming and garnering an audience, one cannot simply press the go live button and hope people roll in. That's not how it works. You will see indies stuck at zero viewers more often than not. And while it might not be true that they're bad entertainers per se, it definitely means that they aren't good at pushing their name out onto other platforms. If I were to sit down on a brand spanking new Twitch account and start doing whispering ASMR, doing nothing to clip and upload the VODs onto other platforms, I'd be stuck at zero viewers. And maybe three scam bots. Again, the lewd part of the content is only a portion of the reason streamers get popular. It's far more likely that they have a good grasp on the trends and market activities on various algorithms. Knowing when to post in the day, where to post, what hashtags and titling to use, and styles of eye-catching short-form editing is impossibly valuable information. To a layman viewer, these analytics are hazy at best. You just know that this same sussy VTuber keeps appearing on your feed and it's starting to piss you off. Frankly, that is direct proof that they are hitting every major and minor factor in content creation to consistently go viral. That is proof of their hard f***ing work. I, I used to be one of those people where I was like, oh my god, well, if you want to be popular as a VTuber, just loot bait and, and post a bunch of Comer stuff, 
And I don't, I don't, I don't think that's true anymore. I don't think that's true anymore. You know, like I've seen plenty of lewd tubers that are irrelevant as f you know. You can't just be lewd in order to in order to get attention. People look at my model and they're like, <laughs> "It's easy to be a popular VTuber like Cyan Lily if you have money to throw out." Uh, excuse you. Here's my weekly task. I make schedules to post. I make thumbnails. I make waiting rooms twice per week. I stream. I make clips for my stream. I brainstorm ideas. I write scripts. I record for shots. I send it to editor for video editing. I receive it. I post it. I record for voice pack. I mix the voice. I post on YouTube and tweet on Twitter. I reply to YouTube comments and tweets. I make pictures to tweet or post. Review your streams. And by looking back at your past streams with a critical eye, you are able to see what you can do better, add on, and just generally improve your streaming quality. And that's what a lot of new streamers should aim to do. The YouTube algorithm is good. The TikTok algorithm is good. The Twitch algorithm is terrible. People always say this thing too. As long as you're consistent, you'll get viewers. And I always say, if you're consistently bad, you can be the most consistent person in the entire world. If you're consistently bad, you're not getting viewers. Now, I've been made aware of some sort of dissociation viewers and VTubers alike have over the state of affairs of streaming and content creation. For some reason, people see and fully recognize issues facecam streamers have had for a decade at this point. But when the same issues emerge in the VTubing sphere, it takes people by surprise. Boggles them, in fact. And time and time again, we run through the same tired discourse like it's the first iteration of it. Why do Lootubers exist? Simple. The same reason hot tub streamers blew up on Twitch. The same reason OnlyFans became a household name. The same reason your dad's credit card is charged $5 a month from a website with a lot of X's in the URL. There's a market for sexual content that breaks the strict barrier between actor and audience. People want to interact in low latency with entertainers who are fully open about their real-world experiences, which oftentimes is censored due to platform restrictions or societal standards. And that's it. It's a niche just as viable as speedrunning or handcam cooking streams. If people want to see it, creators will do it. But much like the hot tub girls who have been in controversy after controversy, while the lewd tuber niche attracts a strong audience of sex positivity, that is not the end of it by far. People hate lewd content hitting mainstream avenues. As the saying goes, there is a time and place for everything, and scrolling TikTok using the algorithm that promises you enjoyable content is what most people do to get through the day. Be it on a public commute ride, chilling with family, or checking your phone during a five minute break at work, people expect to see exactly the type of content they want to see. All of a sudden, there is an anime girl with big titties moaning into the microphone. And uh oh, you didn't have headphones in. And oh no, your mom is side eyeing you and picking up her slipper. How do you explain that? And to top it off, Lootubers often reach beyond the boundary of VTuber fans normies end up seeing their content. What other reaction to an already cringe niche of weeaboos using lowly models trying to be lewd can a mainstream Andy have besides... That's right, as much as there is positive attention on top lewdtubers, there is double the amount of hate and harassment both within and outside of the VTuber community. As we already saw, many VTubers don't like sharing a space with Lootubers, and they are quite outspoken about it. But let's look at the rest of the consumer market. Now, it's not super easy to pull data out of the larger crowd to find exactly what degree Lootubers are harassed, but it's still fairly easy to prove. I am not a Lootuber by any means, and YouTube has already established where my content should appear in the algorithm. So I decided to do a little experiment. If I made sussy shorts, how far would they spread? And what reaction will I get? To start with, I posted two sussy trends popular in the VTubing sphere. Ah, uh, is sexy guys. Thank you for watching. I'm an um, idol. Okay? Please don't try to drink my chitty milk. You are hentai! Are you ready? Oh. Are you a boy? Oh, then what are you? Morning.
and then cycled back to more of a comedic PG-13 style of content. This song is copyright. Kore ga saigo kashira. By the way, credit for all these trends to Fox Plushie's TikTok from a year or two ago because I'm not someone well versed in VTuber trends. And as expected, the majority of comments were by normies, who frankly hated what they saw so much that they not only decided to go through the effort of downvoting, but also commenting. These shorts were my most disliked shorts ever. And of course, you can refute this with how I didn't build up a brand of not safe work enjoyers thus far. But if you're a new unsay so VTuber just starting out, this is probably the reaction you will get for your startup weeks and maybe even months. Perhaps you may think that this is what Lootubers sign up for when releasing the content that they do, but should that be normalized? Should this be brushed off? But that just goes to show, indies who put themselves out there with not safe for work content get way more negative engagement than positive when their content leaves the realm of VTubers. But I can't truly say that everything was horrible. These shorts were also giving me more interactions than ever before. The amount of likes stayed consistent with my other non-sus shorts, but these likes came most definitely from people outside of my usual target audience, due to the boost from unique commenters. I actually gained quite a few subscribers from this series. So my final verdict is that there is a possibility for pretty standard growth as we have seen with the indies that now sit at the top levels of fame, but it comes at the price of more criticism than average. If you don't have a thick skin and don't know how to protect yourself, it can be a very scary and depressing situation. But if you think that's bad, wait until you hear about the other factors built into lewd tubing. Can, can we discuss like the downsides of Open, opening yourself up to incel culture, simp culture, one of those things. So what can people expect to see behind the scenes of a lewd tuber, perhaps your size or above like Project Melody? Like harassment, DMs, simps, hate raids. You mentioned you just got oh, a dick yeah. pic before stream. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. It, like it all depends on your size and the type of content you do. For example, the ASMR artist is gonna get the least while the star gets the most. And the bigger you are, the more of it you'll get, and the faster it'll evolve on you, which is not a good thing. So you're going to get everything from your parasocial people where people want you to be their girlfriend, their boyfriend, or they just assume you're actual f buddies. Mm. When, if we all know parasocial relationships, it's like, I'm a, I'm a VTuber, I'm an entertainer, I am not here to f you, I am not here to be your girlfriend, your boyfriend. We don't even know each other. Mm-hmm. You know, people will think what they think, you know, everyone's guilty of being parasocial to some extent. It's like, hey, do you like a musician? Hey, do you watch a VTuber? Then you're parasocial. You interacted with them briefly or vaguely or indirectly, and that's sad. But it's one, it's another thing to make it weird. And the bigger you get, the more likely you are to get these parasocial people. You're more likely to get people trying to hit on you. Because a lot of people misconstrued flirting with, you're interested in me sexually and want to do something more serious. Yeah. I'm, that's where the incel culture comes in because it's typically the people who have not had much romantic contact that assumes a lewd entertainer wants to be with them. And you'll get more of that kind of stuff like dick pics and even people that are downright offended when you don't reciprocate their feelings, the bigger you get. Basically, the more audience you get, the more exposure you have, the higher your exposure rate, the more likely you are to experience harassment, not likely hate raids. Most people don't hate loot tubers enough that want to do a hate raid. But now I get dick pics because people assume, oh yeah, you know, heavy posted uh, posted feet. Hey yo, heavy posted thigh. Hey yo, heavy's got an ass pic on Twitter. I bet they want to see my dick. No, uh, I, no, I, I really no. don't. If I wanted to, but they assume like, hey yo, if they posted this here on their Discord or in Twitter, maybe they maybe they want to see me. Or for example, a lot of people. Now this is very common for those who do OnlyFans. Yeah. They'll sell photos. A lot of people that buy photos for some reason assume that in addition to purchasing the photos and saying thank you for the great tip pics and ass pics, let me send you my uh, Or like you'll even get women that are like, they're like, hey, let me send you my let me send you my tits because obviously you're going to want to see them. I bought your pics. Let me give you mine for free. 
the star does not want to see what you look like. They're 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 flattered that you find them attractive. They're flattered that you that you you know you jerk it to them, and they and they appreciate it that you pay for that content because that livery keeps the lights on. It pays the bills. It feeds their children and their pets. You know, it's their job. But with that being said, it is their job. This is their side hustle, if not their main source of income. Mm-hmm. They're not here to fuck you, and they don't want to see you naked. They're just glad that you're enjoying the content. It gets to that point. For some people, when your project melody size, it leads to them doxing you. It leads to them stalking you. It leads to them trying to get you swatted or hate rated and so forth. Depending on all how, well, cuckoo some people can be. Again, the bigger you are, the bigger the risk. It's like, okay, you dox me. You know who I am. All right, Come. so what are you going to do about that? <laughs> What are you gonna do? I mean, you come into my house and it's like a t- it's like that TikTok where it's like you know the doom music just kicks on, the doors automatically lock, and all you hear is release the Roombas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I'm not like a, so a lot of uh, VTubers are very concerned about being, and they should be. You know, they should let's be. Say yeah. they're not armed. Let's say they live alone. Let's say they don't collect guns and they don't practice combat sports. If you're just a run of the mill girl or just a regular like femboy, like a lot of them are. That's probably something to be concerned about. Yeah, no, because your your life is actually in danger and you don't have no one there to protect you. When I heard this, I was both surprised and yet not. I knew that workers genuinely fight the problem of unsolicited nudes in their DMs, but I hadn't thought much about how daily of an occurrence it becomes. People view workers as easy, as non-humans, and so their consent doesn't matter. If someone of Mama Heavy's size experiences this, what can we infer about the creators in the upper echelon? And while Mama Heavy speaks specifically on the OnlyFans creators, that isn't to say mildly not safe for it creators are let off the hook from this at all. As a female or female presenting content creator in general, you're bound to get an unsavory DM at one point or another. This niche is like cranking the bass on those DMs to a hundred. Knowing all of this, why do people continue to flock to this highly polarizing niche? Why do you think new creators tend to gravitate towards lewd tubing? As far as oh. uh, making funny jokes and having a big booby model, maybe not essentially going as far as OnlyFans, but, you know, branding themselves as that sort of lewd tuber. Yeah, so there's actually several reasons behind that. Number one, you're going to get freedom. A lot of people want the freedom to say whatever they want, whenever they want to. If you're say-so or you're just in general safe for work, you can't swear. You can't make dirty jokes. You can't have a big titty model. And you may want those things for yourself. You may want the freedom to say, this game is hard or go. Mm. You know, you want to be able to do that kind of shit. It's just like that. <laughs> it's just shit. Casually, you know, and you can't do that if you're safe work. You can't do that, especially if you're say-so. If you just brand yourself as lewd, you skip over the whole adult process. You can say whatever you damn well want. As a lewd tuber, no one's going to bat a lash if you get hentai commissioned of yourself. No one's going to be mad that you got NSFW art. They're going to give you a freaking like on Twitter and say, hey, that's a nice dick. Hey, that's some nice titties, you know? No yeah. big deal. As If you're say-so, strictly taboo. Banned, canceled. Go straight to purgatory. Go straight to hell. Yeah. Not even, get to the purgatory. You're, you, you're done. You're through. If you're safe for work, congratulations. You're now getting ridiculed for exposing people to the horrors of a butt cheek. Being a VTuber, you get that. You get more compliments than you would as any other VTuber. By being a lewd tuber, you'll get viewers faster because people want to see lewd stuff more than they want to see other stuff. Mm-hmm. You'll get more compliments because they want to see the lewd stuff more than other stuff. And if you're insecure, having a sexy model is a good way to build your confidence by getting those compliments and have people get to know you and be like, I get it, you're shy, you know, and you have a tough time IRL because maybe you're overweight or maybe you don't like the way you look or your hair or something. But they're like, you know, you're still a really good person and your model's super cute, but you're also a good person. I just want you to know that you'll get random compliments like that all the time as a lewd tuber, which is really good for your like your like your just your overall mentality, your psyche. You'll get for every negative comment I'd say you'd get, you got like another hundred to another thousand positive comments. The answer, seemingly, is freedom of self-expression. Remember at the very beginning of this video when I talked about adult joke humor being a part of adulthood? That's exactly it. Adults are often sexual beings. 
we've encountered the world and find humor in spicy things. Denying that side of life and identity for the sake of a pure VTuber persona can be complicated. People do do that, and it's especially common in corporate idol spheres, but even then, there are slip-ups. Creators don't like masking under a heavily censored character on livestream. It doesn't feel genuine and hinders creative freedom. So that's where the gray realm of unsay-so unravels, an in-between safe haven for adults who don't want to fully participate in OnlyFans and work, yet also don't want to hide their humor and sexual interests. At the end of the day, it's not always about growing and making money and having thousands of people fall at your feet. It's about your comfort, your passions, and what you want to provide for the VTubing community. And now, let's pivot to the what ifs. What if you, yes, you, the person watching this video, want to become a LooTuber? Where do you start? If a model with many layers, especially fully strippable layers, is what you want, then you'd be facing a bit of a setback. Let's say you have a live 2D model. Yeah. And you know, you got your usual VTuber toggles, you know, you got toggles for like... The hard eyes, um, the sad... Yeah, you know, you got all the usual stuff. You got your gaming, your drinking, your emotions. Yeah. A sexual model would be fully neuter in fetish gear, and they would have things where they could play with their tits, or spread their legs, or, or dangle a s toy. I've seen it all, that's fancy for you, basically in a nutshell. Holy shit, I had no idea these things were happening. Do do you have to find specific like riggers and, and artists to do that? Or is there like, mm, and you can commission most, anyone? Most riggers won't touch it. Most artists won't touch it. And it's not even because they're prude. There's some, there is some that'll be like, hey, yo, I ain't touching that. I, I, I have good, some values here. I got a reputation to uphold. Others are like, I would if I could, but I don't have the artistic ability to draw that. Ah. And there's a lot of riggers that are like, listen, it is hard enough to wriggle jiggle physics onto your thighs and in your chest. You want me to add f f physics? To <laughs> I I'm sorry, that's not they're like a lot of them. They're just like, that's just way out of my league. I can't do that. But there is some people who do do that, typically spread through word of mouth. I mean, heck, I know, I know a live 2D artist who, while he doesn't do rigging and doesn't know a person that does NSFW rigging, he does do NSFW, NSFW models. He doesn't post them on his portfolio, of course. but it's a service that if you know, you can ask. In a niche where incels and odd personalities flourish, it becomes a LooTuber's job to strictly keep an eye on any audience activity, both on stream and off. There are bad actors hidden everywhere, and worst of all, minors who try to sneak in. When these two types of viewers collide, horrible, horrible things could happen. So what can you do to keep yourself and your community safe? I will let Mama Heavy take it from here, as they explained it the best. So on the topic of uh, minors, especially when you're navigating uh, VTubing, because there is a lot of, lot of minors in the VTubing sphere, who are just like avid Niji Sanji watchers who then start like mingling with the indies or wanting to become a VTuber themselves. How do you navigate, uh, let's say Twitch, Twitter, Discord, uh, all the different, as long as there's not like hub uh, fansly and only chat, only fans or whatever, like how do you navigate blocking minors or making sure that they are 18 plus before interacting with them or doing any sort of thing? Yeah, so the funny thing is that's actually one of the biggest struggles you're going to have as not only a YouTuber, but as an adult As YouTuber, an adult, yeah. Is because it's not easy to differentiate these different classes online because be, that's one of the great things about being on the internet. You could be anonymous, okay, and you could be yourself. Mm -hmm. The bad side is it makes it harder to tell who's lying and who's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. This is where you as a YouTuber, especially, adult streamers, of course, but YouTubers extra so. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure you specify things like on your Twitter that this is a mature content. One of the most common things with VTu with VTubers is the Oshi mark. You right. may you, you may be familiar with that. The, the yeah. emote people associate you with. If you're a LibTuber, it's become an unwritten rule that your Oshi mark is an 18 plus symbol. You know mm -hmm. the 18 mm -hmm. with the little like cross through it. That's pretty much required if you're a respectable loot tuber. And another thing that you'll find a lot of loot tubers do, it'll literally say in their Twitter profile, minors D and I, meaning minors do not interact. And you'll yeah. see it on not just Twitter, you'll see that exact, those slogans and those emotes on Instagram, on Facebook, and on TikTok. 
And they, and they dead mean it. I mean, if they find out you're a minor, if you say it, or someone says it, or if they even suspect you, without even proof, they will block you outright. And I follow the same thing. I have the 18 plus and everything, and I literally have it in my server that if I find out you're not 18 plus, you're gonna be kicked and banned immediately. Right. Okay. If you're not, if you're not 18, don't join. And for Twitch, your Twitch and YouTube, you have the option to age restrict yourself. Mm. I choose to do that, like, with all the YouTube videos that I know are already kind of sussy. If I even think it's sus, not even loot, if I think it's sus, I flag my own video as restricted. Oh, wow. So it's 18 plus. So that way you have to be logged into a YouTube that is 18 plus for the birth year. I can't verify if YouTube's verified, but at least I can make sure I did my part on my end. And the same goes for Twitch. I can put on there, this is mature content. You know, the 18 plus warning where they got to click, I acknowledge that this is mature content and then I'm 18 plus. Mm. Do they lie about it? Yeah, they do it all the time. The moment you start talking and we suspect you of being a minor, we're going to question you. And if we suspect it, we'll likely ban you. Mm -hmm. And if you just out yourself, well, that's a self-report. That's totally out of you. I mean, yeah, because I had one person that was like, they came into my chat and they were talking about a Genshin character. And I'm like, it's okay. They're probably of age. I mean, the worst comes to worst. They're my age, you know? And, you know, nothing wrong being with a high schooler. I'm like, yes, there's everything wrong with that, seeing as I have a doctorate and a master's degree IRL. Yeah. And this person, never mind. I've already banned them. By the way, did you know I'm handing out bans? Buy one, get one free today. All you gotta do is be under the age of 18. You can buy one ban and they'll ban your siblings too. <laughs> <laughs> so and then everyone in chat laughed and everyone was happy and, you know, I got rid of the minor. Good. Is this something that you think um, every loot tuber prescribes like like everybody has the 18 bio they have the minors do not interact or has there been like a situation where they've kind of like towed the line unfortunately and like allowed a 17 year old to pass or something like that so where you'll get people allowing 16 and 17 year olds to pass is more common than you'd think really but typically those are cases of where the they either know the person irl which becomes a little more concerning oh yeah uh, the other options are they just don't know. Like the person's straight up lying about their age. Like this person is 16, 17 IRL, but because they're that old, they're smart enough to lie about their age. So right. the loot tuber has no way of knowing unless they do the thing like asking for ID verification. Not everyone does it. Some servers do it. I personally recommend it. I don't do it on my server because my server is still small. Like we're still uh, like under a hundred. I know everyone there. Everyone, almost everyone there, is a regular to my stream. So you don't you don't know any stories of lewd tubers who have accidentally been caught uh, oh, gassing up yeah, a minor. Um, for, I don't know them personally, but I've seen. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with twit longers, right? Yes. Yeah, I've seen quite a few Lootubers that I know post twit longers about Lootubers that they knew. Again, I don't know them, but I know a Lootuber that knew them. Mm. And they're like, hey, just an FYI, this is just for everyone's information. This Lootuber I know that does this kind of content was interacting with this person of this underage. And they'll state, you know, how underage the person was because that's Ooh. kind of a big deal. Yeah. You know, kind of like the, just an FYI, this to person avoid. willingly and knowingly interacted with a minor and they'll state you'll usually state ages or age gaps just as a point of reference so you know how severe it is that's where people start going yeah i'm gonna stop following this person i'm gonna start reporting this person right and that kind of stuff I've, I've seen examples of where people that are bigger than me know other people that are bigger than me and they've seen this stuff but i have personally never experienced this Hopefully I never Hopefully do experience you don't. it. It's not just me though, I'm also protecting you because I'm protecting you from anything that might be in my community or any of my content that might be problematic for you. Because I never know who, because you know, that's one of the issues loot tubers have is you never know if there is a predator in your community. Yeah, yeah. Because predators are naturally attracted to sexually charged communities. Every loot tuber has a sexually charged community. With that being said, we have to start, we have to ban minors because you'd never know. Mm -hmm. It's not like they openly come out and say, oh yes, I'm Joe S offender and I, and I'm literally here looking for grooming. One of my VTuber artists actually has a great rule in his discord. Yeah. It's, which is, it's okay to be a coomer, but not to be a groomer. That's a good rule. I love rule. that because, <laughs> you know, his whole thing is like, even though he doesn't allow minors in his community, he still is like, if he finds out that you 
are, you know, basically a sex offender or a groomer, or if you're even just being weird with, you know, people that are under the age of 18, he's gonna ban you. He's gonna tell everyone about it, too, that's in his social circle. Like, he's told me about a few of them. He's like, hey, just, just an FYI, this person likes to DM 16-year-olds on Twitter. I'm like, hey, yo, that person's a fucking tier 2 sub to me. <gasps> Let's go ahead and give them a quick little ban. Oh, my God. Okay. It's like, Ugh, I get mean, the fuck out of here, you pervert. It's a good thing that the 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 circle takes care of each other. Like they they warn about the bad people in the community. They like block, dispose of them, warn others. Oh, yeah. So that's Loot a good thing. Are great about that. Yeah. So one of the great things about loot tubers is unlike I've noticed with like say so VTubers and adult VTubers, where you'll get a lot of people they'll compete with each other, they'll argue with each other, they'll form these little social cliques. It's like high school 2.0. And they're all fucking against each other all the time. There's always trauma. There's always someone trying to cancel someone or trauma mm. trying to bully someone. It makes no goddamn sense to me. But a loot tubers, they're like, so you a VTuber too? I'm like, yeah, I'm a big kitty elf. What are you? I'm a plague mommy. And you know, and they'll just be like, you know, we'll just now. chat. We'll play games. We'll just you know be real about it. And a lot of us will tell each other if we like if we get a hate rate, we'll be like. Hey yo, fellow loot tubers, we got a hate raider over here. Here's all the accounts that hate raided me. Here's the bots and everything. And you know, and because of that, though, we actually have less trauma in the loot tuber community than the say so community has, because we all are willing to talk with each other. We share DMs with each other. We share screenshots with each other. So we're able to quash out um, groomers out very quickly. We're able to cross out trolls very quickly. We're able to get rid of incels very quickly. Like, hey, this, this you know, this guy sent a dick pic to me. And he was really creepy, and then he gave me my IP address, and then it'd be like, and then usually you'll get someone like, hey, yo, the same guy actually was in my chat a month ago, and he did the same thing to me. And then next thing you know, 30, 40 other loot tubers at this point will be known, you know, it's like, okay, you're going to be preemptively banned. So now that we discussed the loot tuber controversy, where do you stand? I hope this journey was eye-opening for some and reassuring for others. Throughout researching, interviewing, and experiencing it firsthand, I can easily say that my view of LootTubers has expanded and become less judgmental. Everyone has a story to tell, it's just a matter of how you tell it. After all, that's the wonder of content creation, is it not? <laughs>